It is a truth, generally acknowledged, that we are all longing to escape. I escape, always, to my favourite book, Pride and Prejudice. I've read it so many times now, the words just say themselves in my head and it's like a window opening. It's like I'm actually there. It's become a place I know so intimately. I can see that world, I can touch it. I can see Darcy. Whoa, Amanda. Now, where was I? to complain about my life. I want this account de-jointed, yeah? I want her name gone. I mean, it's the same for everybody. And I... Did you get a sack? I, I do what we all do. Do you want to get a sack? I take it on the chin. And patch myself up with Jane Austen. Ah! I know I sound like this <laughs> terrible loser. I mean, I do actually have a boyfriend. It's just sometimes I'd rather stay in with Elizabeth Bennet. I'm not. Michael coming around tonight? No. Why isn't he coming around? Boys' night. He'll be around after that. No, he won't. I've told him not to. I have plans that involve nobody except me, i.e. not you either, so go away. How do I look? Like you put your lipstick on by eating it. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> You are mistaken, Mr. Darcy. If you suppose that the mode of your declaration affected me in any other way, then as it spared me the concern which I might have felt in refusing you, had you behaved in a more gentlemanlike manner. I just want you to read my book. What are you doing? Is this you proposing to me? Yeah. You're drunk. Marry me, babes. Make an honest woman of me. You have no idea, do you? Quite how unromantic that is. Ow! This is most extraordinary. But I beg you, Miss Spencer, to entertain my explanation of it, for it will be truthful, if a little intractable to belief. There is a door, Miss Spencer, in the attic portion of my father's house, which is a place unvisited except by servants and myself. Were this door to open, which it does not, it would give upon the empty air four stories high, for there is no room beyond. It is a door entirely without sense. One may not pass through it, try as one might. Until this day, for you, Miss Spencer, have opened this door for me. You are the key. What makes you think my name is Spencer? It is tailored in your under things. My name is Price, Amanda Price. How do you do, Miss Price? I'm Elizabeth Bennett. Bennett. Yes, I know. Nice. Just a minute! 
three. Okay, Elizabeth Bennett in my bathroom. Clearly I'm hallucinating. Why? Too much Austin? My mother would say not enough boyfriend. Well, he doesn't take drugs. He doesn't knock you about. This place is a mess. Yeah, it's called redecorating. It's what women my age do when they get divorced. It's like sex and you can stop whenever you like for a cup of tea and a biscuit. Give me a cigarette. Mm. No. <clears throat> You're telling me who it is I have to marry now, is that it? I'm reminding you, Amanda, that you are what you are. If you waste your life pretending to be something else, you'll regret it. I don't trust him, Mum. Oh, sweet pea. You had it off with a waitress. Two nights running. God, he's a man. He has appetites. I have this conversation with Piranha on a regular basis and she never gets it. I am not hung up about Darcy. I do not sit at home with the pause button and Colin Firth in clingy pants, okay? I love the love story. I love Elizabeth. I love the manners and the language and the courtesy. It's become part of who I am and what I want. I'm saying, Mum, that I have standards. Well, you have standards, Pat. I hope they help you on with your coat when you're 70. I, who have valued myself for my abilities, who have often disdained the generous candor of my sister and gratis me, and we are engaged. It is settled between us already that we are to be the happiest couple in the world. Not astonishing. Were such a thing at my disposal, I should do little else but toy with it all day. Miss Bennett, I think I may be having a nervous breakdown. You see, I am a real person, and you are a pretend person. You are the creation of Jane Austen. I'm not acquainted with this person. You are a character in a book. This one, written by her. 200 years ago. It grieves me, Miss Price, that I must presume to dispute with you. I have my fleshly envelope. Is you yours? Tell me something I couldn't possibly know. Please, a piece of information that simply doesn't exist in my brain. Just, just do it. Netherfield Park is let. No, no, I know that. But you cannot. The news was fetched only this morning. I have told no one but Lady Ambrosia. I know about Mr. Darcy everything. But you don't. You haven't met him yet. Okay, something else, please. The part of Russian America that most intrudes into the Arctic Sea is called Point Barrow. I've never heard of Russian America. It occupies the northernmost territory in the west of the Americas. Well, that's Alaska. I've never heard of Alaska. Show me the door, Miss Bennett. That's not a door. I mean, it, it could have been a door, but look, it's part of the wall. It's got all the piper stuff behind there. The plumbing. Yet it is the way I entered. Sorry, miss, but are you dining tonight? 
Mr. Bennett likes to know what number to expect at table. Please advise Mr. Bennett that I will be down directly. I was just um, looking for him. Yes, ma'am. Whom shall I say has given the master this message, ma'am? A friend of Miss Elizabeth. This is seriously weird and I want to go home. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Well, I have said, Mama, that if I am to be received at Leatherfield, I shall dress myself in silk. I can't for any trousers, so I shall. Lydia, as your father has said, Declined to call on Mr. Bingley, the notion of such an excursion is entirely fanciful. It be such a snippet. <laughs> ah! Spread the windpipe. I mean, good heavens. Forgive me, but the noise in this palace of lunacy is more than a reading man can bear. So you are. Elizabeth's friend? Yes, Amanda Price, sir. How marvellous to have the society of ladies who are not promiscuous with speech. Allow me to introduce myself across the wasteland of the servant's stairs. I am Elizabeth's father, Claude Bennett. Claude? You're kidding. Doubtless it exposed me to some comments around the font, but it was the name my parents chose. So, you are not a local person, Miss Price? I rent in Hammersmith. It's an area of London. I have driven through a pleasant place that bears the name, but it was some miles from London. I suppose it would have been. And you are acquainted with Lizzie How? Known Elizabeth for years. Until yesterday, I had not heard her talk of you. But it is eminently possible she has made many great speeches on the subject, and I have merely forgot. Old age, Mr. Price. I find I cannot recommend it. My wife. Lizzie has told you about our thrilling new neighbour. Mr. Bingley? Pleasant enough fellow, not strong on brains. I called on Bingley this forenoon. Haven't told my wife that, but she enjoys the suspense. We really are right at the beginning, aren't we? You do make the most refreshingly elliptical conversation, Miss Price. So, Lizzie has gone to Hammersmith to see you, but you have come to Longbourn to see her. You will forgive me for observing that the arrangement seems to have a flaw. Oh dear, are you quite well? I do feel a bit unusual. Might I go back upstairs? Of course. We can dissect this matter further on the morrow. Take Lizzie's bed. She claims it is tolerable soft. Sleep well in it. Thank you. Well, I call it perverse. Must have been in residence all week. Bingley, Mama. Not quite a mile to present his car. I said Bingley. You said Bingham. If you persist in contradicting me, dear, you will go to your room. Willingly. I'm as likely to meet a husband there as anywhere else in this house. Sit down at once, Mr. Bennett. Oh, am I? Miss Price, I did not mean to startle you. No, no, no. It's um, Papa sent us to see that you knew Lizzie's room, but clearly you. Yes, thank you. You're Kitty, aren't you? And you're Mary. I've read so much about you, I feel I know you. Read? Heard. Talking to Elizabeth, who is my friend. Is there anything we can get you, Miss Price? A dish of faggots? All right for faggots, thank you. I think I'll just, um, go to sleep. Right.
Lend me your hand, Kim, Lizzie. Oh! You're with Price of Hammersmith. Yes. I thought you felt funny. Well, I often get into bed with Lizzie in the night. She strokes my back when it's time to wake. Oh, I'm Lydia, by the way. I know. What preparation do you use for your hair? It's most pungent. Okay. Look, I've had enough of this. What's the deal here? Are we live on cable or something? Is this like the Jim Carrey thing? But period. Where are the cameras? Oh, come on! What are you after, guys? A bit of girl-on-girl -girl action under the covers? What do I have to do to get out of here? Snogger? <laughs> Show you my pubes? What have you done to yourself? That's called a landing strip, Lydia. Standard pubic topiary. The fit of her breeches is really quite extraordinary. The breeches are as nothing but an hour. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Price. Did you sleep? I did. Thank you. Please sit here next to me. I'm Jane. My sisters, I think you've already met. There is chocolate and green tea and marmalade, for which Hill makes exceptional toast. <laughs> Sorry we cannot offer you anything more amusing. It all sounds heavenly. Your tunic, Miss Price, it is what is worn in town this season. I think it's very fine. Kitty, you are importunate. I am starved of fashion is all. This is otter hunting kit. <laughs> Goodness. Are otters routinely hunted in Hammersmith? Oh, yes. The belt, therefore, is for the attachment of grelicking knives. Absolutely. My proper clothes are, you know, coming. Oh, I shouldn't bother. In this house, we may as well take the veil. All Papa has to do, Jane, is call on Mr. Bingley. It's not arduous. Yet to punish us for being liberty gibbets, he will not. I think you'll find that... Um... My mother, Miss Price, is a little indisposed this morning. I'm sorry to hear that. She suffers from her nerves. Yes. Have you met my mother? I've... Um... Yet to have that pleasure. <gasps> who is that? He sits his horse well. I'll tell you exactly who that is. Oh, Mr. Bingley. It is unutterably kind of you to call. Come and curtsy, madam. Neighbours, let's go forth. Oh, my God. Ah, <laughs> oh, Bingley. Welcome, sir, to the asylum. What? Finished already? You have devoured Rousseau apace. Find him eminently digestible. The gentlemen are acquainted. We've known each other oh, hours. We lend each other books. It is practically a marriage. That's Mrs. Bennet. Say, Mr. Bennet. I lack the opportunity. Mr. Bingley. And yes, he's looking at Margaret Jane. Bingley, you've words to say in this house. Speak them up sharp. <laughs> now, let us sort the sheep from the goats. My daughters Jane, Mary, Kitty, Lydia... Elizabeth, the very goatiest, is not here. In her stead, we have Miss Amanda Price. <laughs> Charmed. Charmed. Miss Price is of Hammersmith. Really? Excellent fox hunting country, I hear. Well furnished with otters. Shush. Undoubtedly. Elizabeth is presently to be found disporting in the otter-strewn thoroughfares of Hammersmith. Miss Price will explain. Lizzie's gone to my place. She's, um, as it were, trying to write a book, mm -hmm. a novel. She's tried to write it here, but she finds the life of the house distracting. My place, it seemed logical that she should dig in there for a day or two. Get something down on paper. She intimated to me she would be gone for weeks. Did she? Well. Anyway, we've done a sort of swap. She's there, and I'm, um, here. But why? 
Mr. Bennett, at such a time like this, with... Lizzie begs your forgiveness for not explaining these plans more thoroughly. I think she wanted it to be a, you know, surprise. I call it a marvellous idea. Writing. All in favour of that. Mr. Bingley, are you at all disposed to join the dancing tomorrow night at the assembly room? Royally disposed, Mrs. Bennet. I've summoned hordes of friends from London. We should be quite a party. He means Darcy. Is Hammersmith a likely sort of piece? I was not aware it was abroad, my dear, but I salute your superior command of geography. Ah! We are arrived, Miss Price, at a particularly fine prospect. Another field park. According to disposition, one can marvel at the delicate masonry of the windows or thrill to the wealth of the tenant. I learn in chat from Mrs. Lucas that chiefest among Mr. Bingley's guests is Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy of Pemberley. I have attended the disclosure with the reverence befitting all your utterances, my dear. Now kindly explain it to me. Darcy, Pemberley, with 10,000 a year. My joy, accordingly, is unconfined. Jane, it appears you must now marry Mr. Darcy instead of Mr. B. <laughs> it's not presently my plan, sir, to marry either gentleman. No, but it is your mother, so choose your hymns. What say you, Miss Price? Shall Jane be wedded to this Mr. Darcy? <laughs> Kitty, you are overstimulated. But Miss Price is quite Delphic, mother. She prefigures all. I have no idea. Perhaps it is Elizabeth who shall be married. Elizabeth's not here. Elizabeth, I am not you. You should be here. There's going to be a ball. At the ball, you meet Darcy. You have to meet Darcy, do you understand? You have to meet him, Elizabeth. It's what happens. Oh, I'm so looking forward to the prospect of Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy. <laughs> I hate a man with too much money. Mary, that's very modern and I dare say very clever, but you will oblige me. Last minute lippy. For luck. It's all the rage in Hammersmith. This evening, Miss Bennett. Make sure you dance with Mr. Bingley. It's important. Miss Price, you... You really are alarming. Explain your meaning. I can't. I don't know what will happen if I do. I'm just saying, tonight is supposed to be fun. To have a lovely time with Bingley. Let's get to work. Ladies, how very splendid you all look. I'm so pleased you've come. I think we all feel it would have been preferable had Miss Price remained in Hammersmith rather than perplexing us here with her radical manners. I disagree cordially, Mrs. Bennet. I find your guest refreshing. Thank you. What is this wine? A punch, man. No, no, don't go away. <laughs> Miss Price, allow me to reduce Miss Bingley. <coughs> How do you do? I am not joking, which must be counted in one's favour. Your Charles's sister. One cannot deny the accusation, however unused to being defined in terms of one's brother. <laughs> no accusation, Caroline. Your brother's a gentleman. Miss, um, Lucas. Lucas tells me you are come up from town, Miss Price. Hammersmith. Oh. Miss Price, you are quite flushed. Another refreshing glass, perhaps. Oh. Oh. 
We're both of us in a dream, Miss Price. More than you know, Mr. Bingley. Now we have collided so fortuitously. May I beg the honour of the next excursion? You want to dance? Oh, uh, I'm afraid that's um, not possible. You cannot dance a quadrille. I cannot dance a quadrille. And it shall be my happy duty to educate you. <laughs> Alas, that unrewarding task has been claimed by another. Another? Mm -hmm. Miss Price, I fear there may have to be a duel. <laughs> Who is to be your dancing master? Name the dog. Don't say it. Mr. Darcy. Darcy? You said it. You certainly have that right, Miss Price. Darcy! Darcy! A most grievous slur has been cast upon your character. Miss Price here says she won't dance with me because you've already asked her. Is that right? Yes. Yes? What fresh lunacy is this, sir? You've never lifted a hoof to dance in your life. Until this evening, I've not had the honour of being acquainted with Miss Price. Well, this is an event of some significance, Miss Price. Quite unprecedented. Darcy regards all forms of sudden locomotion as emblematic of ill breeding. Hunting, tennis, rising precipitately from a chair. When Miss Price and I dance, sir, there shall be nothing sudden. I can't dance. This sort of dance. Nor I. Together we shall make a shambles. But we shall do it with such authority that everyone will stare at us to learn the step. Madam? Oh, um... Fortunately, we're obliged only to dance. Why did you say yes? To spare my friend the humiliation you contrived for. I didn't seek to humiliate Mr. Bingley. Then your refusal to dance with him was most ill adapted to its purpose. Drunk. I need a fag. I've got one fag. Everything I do is wrong. Everything. Please, God, I want to go home. You even breathe fire. Stone-Age tribe and gave them the common cold. Wiped them out. Miss Price, I... <laughs> go. <laughs> no doubt, Miss Bingley, you and your brother find these young provincial gentlemen lacking in metropolitan refinement. Oh, the young gentlemen we find the acme of particularity and taste. It, it is the ladies of the country whose crassness is unparalleled. As the mother of many daughters, you must find it wearing to have to lead by example in this field. I do, Miss Bingley. I do. Miss Price, a word. According to the laws of Christian hospitality, Miss Price, I may not turn you out of my house. Instead, I shall favour you with a warning. I do not know how a person like you comes to be so friendly with Elizabeth. I fear your influence on her. But as to my other daughters who remain in my care, hear this. Do not obstruct them. I promise you, Miss. It is not necessary for you to speak. Just listen. Do not obstruct any one of them in her quest for a propitious marriage. For if you do, and my estate is lost because of it, something may come over you, Miss Price, like a thief in the night, which may not be quite so agreeable. Well, you're a real 
ball breaker. Sorry, you didn't know what that meant. I understand the sense of your speech well enough, Miss Price. Do you understand why? My dear father, I pray you, sir, not to trouble your mind about your most headstrong daughter. I quite flourish in Hammersmith. I am minded to sojourn here alone a while. Uh, um, alone is underlined. If I might be so presumptuous as to offer advice to my own father, then I would admonish him to pay particular attention to Miss Price. She is intimately acquainted with the doings of our family and I cordially believe her to be its most devoted and formidable ally. Trust her. Your affectionate daughter, Elizabeth. When Lizzie was ten years old, I taught her to fly a kite. She soon mastered it. She stood between my arms, in front of me, and took the strain. I believe she has taken it ever since. But as for my trust, you have it. A rare thing, Miss Price, but Kitty was quite right. You are oracular. Mm. You prophesied Mr. Darcy would attend the ball and he duly came. Did he prove equal to your expectations? Yes. And no. I mean, he's not Colin Firth. But even Colin Firth isn't Colin Firth. They had to change the shape of his head with makeup. But no, Mr. Darcy was pretty spectacularly unfriendly. <laughs> but that's what one would expect. Physically, he fills his britches pretty well, but he doesn't, you know, float my boat. All that aristocratic languor. I know he can't help it, but it's really not very attractive to me. He does not float your boat. <laughs> An expression current in Hammersmith never to be used in front of Lydia. <laughs> Without Lizzie, the equilibrium of this house is fragile. It is fruitless to pretend otherwise. However, your presence among us affords a certain reassurance, at least to my father, and to me. It's very good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad I can be of service to you while I'm here. It's not service, Miss Price. It is friendship. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. I have no idea how to fix this book. And I cannot sew this bloody pew thing without stabbing myself in the hand. Oh, Miss Lucas, how convenient you are. How glad I am of that, Mrs. Bennet. This is almost <laughs> industrious. Miss Price, alas, is a stranger to handiwork for the church. I'm sure she would bless you were you to take charge of her kneeler. I may need to unpick all this and start again, Miss Price. Elizabeth sends news. She writes to her father. Not to me. She clearly intends to stay in Hammersmith. Indefinitely. And how long do you plan to stay here, Miss Price? I intend to trespass on the hospitality of this household for, for not much more time. 
I hope you stay forever. Church has had enough from me for today. Let us have tea. Mr. Bennett. <sighs> Do you show me your finger because it is injured? I wish to know, Mr. Bennett, how long Miss Price is to remain our guest. She does not materially contribute to the running of the household. She is unkempt and indelicate and not at all couth. She's upsetting the servants with all manner of improper remarks. Elizabeth, in the book, your mother sends Jane to Netherfield on a horse in the rain. She gets a cold and has to stay the night, and that's how Bingley falls in love with her. But it's not happening. Nothing is happening the way it should. Right. I will do my best. Okay? For Jane. Mr. Finley instructed you to invite me to visit him. Some men just find it hard to speak their love, except through an intermediary. It's not uncommon. <clears throat> you must go. If I set off for Netherfield, Miss Price, it shall surely pour with rain. Look at the sky. The rain will be torrential, and you will get very wet. <laughs> this is all how it should be. Trust me. Where's my sister going? Netherfield. But there is to be heavy rain. She'll be soaked to the bone and catch the grip. Mm -hmm. But this is terrible. The infection goes straight to her chest always. The last time she contracted it. Oh, foolish girl, she does not know. Doesn't Mama. know what? How close she was to death. Mama! gone to Netherfield Park in this weather and Miss Price pursues her. Are you so obtuse, Mr. Bennett, that you do not see what is the matter here? She has gone to queer Jane's pitch. This is exciting when you bring the language of the theatre into this house, my dear, but might this room be returned to the purpose for which it was created? For me to sleep in undisturbed. <gasps> The weather today is uncongenial. Is it? One tends not to notice. Temperature, let's just. You sit down. Here you go. Can you pass? The... Thank you. Charles, I've taken the liberty of ordering the Phaeton to take Miss Price back to Longbourn. What? No, 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 no. Miss Price must stay here. She is the best possible nurse. She has paracetamols. Then, of course, she must remain. The night we spoke on the terrace, I must confess I cannot stop thinking of your lips. Of you. God, help me, Miss Price, your tongue. Stay there. Stay. I never meant for that to happen. I've been drinking. I was disorientated. I'm drawn to you. I'm a man. Oh, I, I'm a woman, and I'm drawn to other women. You... 
I mean, there really are ladies who steer the punt from the Cambridge end. Uh, you bet. The other night I got carried away and I'm sorry, but nothing like it is ever going to happen again. With me. Ever. It might, on the other hand, happen with her. Can't you see? It's her you love, not me. Open your eyes, Mr. Bingley. Big on seafood. Miss Price does not care for oysters. You may bring her the next course. I have exchanged places, Mr. Darcy, with my friend Elizabeth. She is another sister of Miss Bennett. Uh, I expect you've heard great reports of Elizabeth's sparkling wit. About Miss Bennett? You lied. Why? God, I know you're supposed to be abrupt, but that's a bit stark. I'm always stark with liars. Elizabeth, what can I say? You're welcome to him. <clears throat> Miserable sod. Miss Price, you have an appetite to be proceeding so quickly to the logs ahead of Mr. Darcy? Or bring Miss Price another leash of birds. She's manifestly famished. Oh, oh, now I shall not say another word. Clearly I've interrupted a most fluid and informed conversation. How does Miss Bennet, Charles? Better. Miss Price is most adroit in her treatment of the sick. Mr. Bingley, have you considered giving a ball at Netherfield? <coughs> Wouldn't it be a fun way to bring together people who, um, need to be brought together? How I envy Miss Price to be so inspirited by the mere thought of music that it quite sweeps away all anxiety for her friend. Now, after dinner, you must play for us at the pianoforte. No, no, no. I insist. I'm sorry, I can't play. Uh, this. The instrument is not to your satisfaction. Charles, you must send for another immediately. She means she cannot play the piano. Any piano. Is that the truth of it, Miss Price? How singular. But she can sing. Of course she can sing. All ladies can sing. My sister shall accompany you. No, that won't be necessary. I, I will sing a song my mother used to sing to me when I was little. <clears throat> when you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown when you've got worries. All the noise and the hurry seem to help, I know. Downtown, just listen to the music of the traffic in the city. La 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 la, and the neon lights are pretty. How can you lose? The lights are much brighter there. You can forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, and go downtown. Everything's waiting for you. What an instructive evening. If all else fails, Miss Price, you shall not want for supper, for you can see. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Money, Miss Price, the fortune to which you aspire in the immediate instance may pass you by. But I am certain you shall not starve. No, I don't suppose I shall earn 27,000 a year. Bravo, Miss Price. 
And whenever life is getting me down, I shall be sure to go downtown. Hey, Darcy. With alacrity. Do you perform, Mr. Darcy? Not in your league, Miss Price. Woo, smolder alert. I am for bed. Sleep well, madam. Miss Price, I have found it difficult to accommodate the knowledge of your private disposition. However, I have directed my eyes as you ordained, Miss Price. And I shall send it once for gammon and eggs. And, uh, a brace of partridge. Nothing too substantial. You've been ill. It may have seemed I was unaware of your nursing me. I was not. I thank you for your kindness. Of course, I'm quite delirious with anxiety for Miss Bennet. With her sister Elizabeth being away for so long, I, I'm all behind like a duck's tail. <laughs> I understand your daughter is sufficiently recovered to receive. Oh, this tea. Does music give you pleasure, Mr. Darcy? Oh, good music played with esprit cannot fail to please. My daughter, Mary, is prodigiously talented at music. Mr. Darcy thinks of Miss Price singing when he speaks of esprit. The fact she has 27,000 a year does lend sparkle to her dreariest utterance. What? Who told you that? She did. Unbidden. Gleefully. <laughs> Am I not ghoulishly indiscreet? Hey. Oh, Jane, my heart has not been right since I discovered you were gone. Oh, oh. Oh, I would never have allowed you out in such a storm. Mr. Beanley, you are to be chided for drawing her here. Quite so, Mrs. Bennet. From start to finish, my brother's every action has been unpardonable. Mr. Bingley has been the quiddity of kindness. With the permission of my hosts, I'm quite ready to return home. Come on, Bingers. Oh, uh, right you are. Um, I'll bid you good day, madam. Oh. That was pathetic. you have brothers, Miss Price? Uh, one brother, Kevin. Oh, how lovely. Does Kevin share your commodious residence? Oh, I wouldn't share a bag of chips with Kev if it could be avoided. He's pretty feral. He's 15. Why doesn't he take a horse? He cannot ride. Why doesn't one of you take one? They're not saddles. To ride without a saddle would be monstrously indelicate. On the subject of indelicacy, might I presume to advise you as you've advised me? Look to Mr. Darcy. He is an insufferable, proud man, but he has qualities he must have that are not immediately apparent. He is, after all, the bosom friend of Mr. Bingley. The formidable size of Mr. Darcy's income makes us silly in his eyes, I know. But you, your own wealth renders his fortune dwarfish. Such a woman he could respect. Jane, Darcy is not for me. Darcy is for Elizabeth. Mm. It is her destiny to be with him. It is yours to be with Bingley. I'm not pretty for Bingley. Mama! See, we are rescued! Oh, <laughs> Ladies, I rather form the impression you were satisfied to meet His Majesty's militia. <laughs> Gentlemen, acquaint yourself with the roof. We have acquired a most precious cargo that must be stowed within. You are most kind, sir. To whom do we owe the pleasure of this most felicitous offer? Captain Wickham, madam, all felicity is entirely mine. <laughs> Oh. 
You are too kind, Mr. Wickham. Can I press you to take a dish of tea? Uh, alas, madam, we are indefatigable in the defence of the realm, but I shall, if I may, call some other day to pay my respects. Uh, off, Wickham, I know you. But I have not had the pleasure. Get used to that. The first duty of an officer is, after all, gaiety. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bennett. My dear Mrs. Bennett, how timely you are at last. Allow me to introduce my cousin, Mr. Collins. Oh, oh my goodness. I am honoured, sir. I saw the carriage outside, but I... Did... Oh, no, naturally. The Phaeton is one of a fleet of 15 belonging to my patroness, Lady Catherine de Bourgh. She lent it to me specifically for the purpose... For the purpose, Mr. Collins? ...of visiting you, Mrs. Bennet. <gasps> and making the acquaintance of your famously radiant and charming daughters, is it? <gasps> they are speaking, I wonder. It is indeed. This is Lydia. Uh, and, uh, come, 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 come. This is Kitty. Mary. She is prodigiously talented at music. Oh. And Jane, my eldest daughter, who has not been well and is not looking her best. Oh. Dearest cousins, all. Oh. Mr. Bennett, you must exult like a sultan when you gaze upon your adorable ladies. And this, therefore, is Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth is presently in town. At this time of year? Well, we shall not tell Lady Catherine. <sighs> Her ladyship is very firm about the season. Uh, uh, we have in her place Miss Amanda Price. You will stay to dinner, Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins will stay the fortnight. Is that not the plan? Oh, two whole weeks. We are so fortunate, Mr. Bennett. Indeed, the Lord has smiled upon us. Oh. <laughs> Mary, your spectacles are filthy. Lydia, do you have some practice this dance? I never beheld such a fidget. Kitty, the drawing up of phlegm through the nose is not the action of a lady. Jane, you lent Miss Price your silken scarf. Get it back, for what is now afoot in this household is neither for her benefit nor her entertainment. I cannot impress upon you all with sufficient... sufficiency. Mr. Collins must be given cause to bind himself to us, to love us, to... to love one of us in particular. <laughs> Lord, let it be Kitty. But, Mama... Me. You think I jest? I do not jest. The woman Mr. Collins marries will be mistress of this house when your father is dead. Mm. Now think on that. And go about your business. Collins. On the page, okay, he's pretty bad. In the flesh, he's all-time king of the Mingers. He squeezes himself through his trouser pocket. You know the thing men do when they think you can't see? And then he sniffs his fingers. Elizabeth, listen. Collins is supposed to marry Charlotte Lucas, okay? But your mother is taking your sisters and just throwing them under him. And Jane! Jane's got to marry Bingley and she thinks Bingley doesn't give a damn. And frankly, he's not acting like he does. He does, but he's so bloody repressed he can't express it. I cannot do this without your help. Big surprise, I have to.